Hi, everybody. This is A Wee Bit of Alchemy. I'm Rick Barrett. Welcome. This is season three of A Wee Bit of Alchemy, our 101st episode. And so we're going to be starting off this new season. We're going to do some a little bit of review of uh, some things we've been covering recently and uh, kind of getting off and on a, a real substantial foundation to move forward. Uh, one of the questions that came up and I think is something that uh, we need to, to talk about a little bit, and that is something we've been covering the last couple of weeks, and the idea of taking control of your nervous system, your, your autonomic nervous system. Now, your autonomic nervous system is the part of your, your nervous system, which controls the more or less automatic functions, things like heart rate, your breathing, your digestion, things like that. And it's divided into two basic uh, systems. One is the sympathetic, which is the go, go, go part. It's the energy out part. And it's what is associated with doing, but also to a large extent with the fight, flies, freeze mechanism that uh, gets triggered whenever we are, uh, you know, when we feel threatened by the environment, either real or imaginary or hinted at or whatever. And uh, the other part is the parasympathetic, which is the rest and relax, the, the uh, feed and breed uh, part, which that means it just is where we, the energy is restored and we digest our food, where the body repairs itself, we sleep, we sleep deeply. So the deeper we can go into the parasympathetic, the more we're able to let go of the stresses of the day and return to homeostasis or a, uh, a normal functioning and allows the body to rebuild itself. So what happens going back to the sympathetic nervous system is that we tend to get the doing associated with kind of uh, a stressful kind of situation uh, feeling anyway. So the, um, the even the simplest of actions become challenges so that we tense up before we do anything. So just think of it. I mean, like a classic example is driving a car. You know, if you're driving and you're holding the wheel and your shoulders are riding up and you're feeling tension in your neck, etc. That's that's an indicating that that you are holding on to a lot of stress in your system at a pre-conscious level. That is, you're not even thinking about it. It's just like, uh, it's, it's your body is responding. And then you'll, any place that you can feel in your body that you're feeling tension or knots or, or even pain, you know, there's a very strong likelihood that that is an area where you're giving your body contradictory um, intentions where it's saying stop and go at the same time. And so you're, clenching, you're putting, the, you're trying to go forward, but you're also putting the brakes on at the same time, that sort of thing. So we, we call that kinking the hose, which will feed into our discussion in, in, in a bit here. But the, so the, any kinks in the hose get in the way of you expressing energy as efficiently as you possibly can. So one of the, the three gates, or the, or I mean, the three pillars that we talk about is to unkink the hose. So that is, you're letting go of this, these, these stuck points so that the energy can flow more freely. So one of the things we've been talking about is taking control over the sympathetic nervous system consciously, by like conscious feeling and conscious doing. And since so much of our doing is preceded by a, a tightening up and particularly in the shoulders, we, we, we lock up and then we try to do even things, simple things like say, typing, you know, you're, you know, if you find yourself tensing up to do that, that it's an indicator that you are, there's a, a pre-conscious stress response that's occurring there. One solution to this is to take control of your sympathetic nervous system by conscious feeling and conscious doing. And simple hacks, to help this, the, I've been working on, because it's, it's, if you think about it broadly, it's very tough to implement. If you say, okay, well, just relax your shoulders as you're doing your Tai Chi form, people say, okay, sure. And then the minute any kind of stress comes in, then the shoulders ride up and or when you're not actually directly thinking about it. So the 
and it's more of an indicator of your general state. So if you can consciously feel your movement and intentionally do that before you, you execute something, then it's like putting in the clutch on a car. You put it into a neutral state and then you, you engage. So if you, if like say, if you just say, pick up your arm, you know, just to try that, just picking up your arm and just feel what that feels like. And you'll notice that most, just about everybody, you're going to start initiating the, the movement from your shoulder. And that seems to be the, the, the quickest way to do it. But it also creates a kink in the hose. It creates tension. So the, it automatically triggers us into that, that stress response, which then gets in the way of everything else we do. So if we can learn to disconnect from that, then we can take over control of the, the body in a much more elegant and efficient fashion. So one of the things we've been talking about lately is just to feel, like say if you grab your wrist like this, I've got my right hand and my left, uh, my, my right arm, my left hand is grabbing my wrist and I'm just holding that and I'm just holding it tight there and then I just turn my hand and I can feel the resistance and I can also feel, you know, the uh, tension in the shoulders. I try to do that. So, uh, and that's 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 fine. That's, that's kind of normal. And that's whenever I'm thinking about it strictly as a mechanical action. But if I if I want to turn my hand this way, that is, I'm turning, I'm reaching over with my thumb and turning it that way. Um, first thing I want to do is to go the opposite direction, just to feel that and then turn it and just notice that when you do that, your effective power increases dramatically. Also, you have a tendency to disconnect from your shoulder as you do that. So this ties into a key Taiji Chuan principle, which is that if I want to move left, first I move right. If I want to move up, first I move down. And this is something that, that's kind of hidden hinted at in the in the classics and it's it's a it's a key principle so that is if i want to ward off say to the right i if i just feel my arm going a little bit to the left and then going that way what happens is i disconnect that shoulder tension that might happen if i'm just trying to push away with my arm whereas this way i can just rotate that and it becomes a rather effortless, effortless kind of thing. But more important, I do this and I change my wiring so that I am consciously doing. There's a conscious doing there, an intentional doing, a volitional doing that means that I'm taking my body mind off of automatic and I'm running it. I'm directing the intentionally directing the movement. And this is something that you can do a thousand times a day. And, you know, I want to turn my head to the right. I just turn to the left first, you know, just things like that. It, you just get it. What it does is it, it establishes a principle that we've talked about many times, and that is to feel first, then do. And even more than that, feel the stillness before the doing. So first, you first establish that state of stillness, and then you do. So if I, if I want to lift my arm, my left arm, and I just kind of just rotate my wrist just a little bit, and then, oh, then lift it. It gives, it allows me to establish a different pathway through my nervous system to enable that to happen. So then I do that thousands of times and that becomes new circuitry. I'm evolving my nervous system in present time. That's the, uh, that's my hypothesis on this, my, my way of thinking about this. So uh, any questions on that?
Is that good? Good. Was that clear? Is that clear, Richard? <laughs> You're laughing. <What's... laughs> uh, you're on mute. You're on mute. You're on mute, Richard. <laughs> I'm muting you. I, right, I was right. just tickled at something. Forgive me for uh, oh, okay. causing a stir. Yeah, well, you were the question one answered the question, so I was. Well, did that bring you up to speed? Good. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And yes, and in fact, it was uh, it was very clear and very dramatic when I tried tried it a little bit. So thank Good. thank you. That's 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 pretty wild. Another one of those wild things from Tai Chi Alchemy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a simple hack that. Uh, that has a profound effect. And you know, you can feel that anytime. What it does is it, thinking in Taiji terms, what it does is it allows us to access Jin instantly. Just by doing that, then oh, we we and our how well we can access that Jin, Jin being an expression of energy through the body, how well we can access that Jin is dependent on our Kung Fu. That is how much work you've done, how much effort you put into making it, you know, making it real to you, which then transforms, that effort transforms the circuits in your nervous system, which allows you to, to express your, uh, yourself even even more efficiently, more fluidly, more easily. Cool, so let's uh, move on to, I want to, what I want to do is to review the, uh, the three pillars, because this is something that we've covered a hundred times and uh, over, the, over the last couple of years, and it's something that bears repeating because um, I usually lead you through it and you know think to yourself like if you were to actually try to lead someone else through that how would you do that how would you express the three pillars and just give yourself a a, a reality check on how deeply you understand that information because what I what I'm going for with this and this is part of the kung fu is to make it so it's, it's not something that takes us, you know, a minute or two to, to make that happen, but it's something that you can establish your, your three pillars in a matter of less than a second, let's say. So that you have that so deeply held, that deeply, profoundly, you know, embodied that you can immediately shift from one position to another and do it without losing the three pillars while you're transitioning and in that new position. So, uh, so we're gonna do, a, try it in a bunch of different positions. And so we can uh, start to get the hang of, of being able to, to establish it and then speed that up, process up as we're doing it. And then this, this uh, enables us to provide, uh, to create a foundation going forward for whatever else we're gonna be doing. So uh, just to recover, re uh, recap the, uh, the three pillars of body, mind, spirit integration. And this is something that, this is my language. Uh, other people will think about it in different ways, but I'm, I find it uh, useful to think about it in these terms that you have your central equilibrium. And what that means is your relationship to earth and heavens, finding your center, being able to know where that is, because everything you do is going to be related to that. That is your orientation to, to, to the earth because gravity has, is engaging in a rather persistent conversation with your body mind, so that is the earth talking to you. It's sending communication night and day. So learning how to communicate 
with the earth and understand the language that the earth is is communicating enables us to find a position be able to hold our bodies in a way that is most efficient and um, and that allows any movements that come out of that to be more efficient if you do not have that as your foundation then everything is your body mind is going to be looking for something that it can it can uh, uh, organize to and there's a lot of confusion involved that if you have central equilibrium as a one of your foundation points then it gets uh, it, the body mind doesn't get as confused it, it says oh okay we got that part covered i feel safe because of this so the connection to the earth the connection to the heavens is through the crown of the head right here at the top back of the head so you can find that hair whirl and that that's that crown point which you're reaching up with that and that establishes your connection through the bai hui, which is that there's two points in the bai hui. One is right there at that at that hair, hair whirl, and the other is right here at your upper dantian or third eye. So this is the yin point, and this is the yang point, and um, and so the bai bai hui or not the bai hui. I'm sorry, the the ni wan. Scratch that. So we have the Niwan point here. The Bai Hui is actually up uh, more, more forward of the of the Niwan. So the, the Niwan relates to the parts of your brain. It's a spiritual center, but it's also directly related to your pineal gland and your pituitary gland and you know the center of your of, of, of your brain. And uh, so you're reaching with that that Niwan point. Yeah. And at the same time, you tuck in the chin, which then opens up the jade pillow gate here at the base of the skull. And so we're doing two things here. One is one of the two pillars are covered by this particular movement. That is the, the central equilibrium. We're establishing that. And we're also, by unkinking the hose here, we're getting that, that third pillar, the unkink the hose part. We're, we're initiating that in one of the spots where the hose gets severely kinked because a lot of people have a tendency to to kind of jut the chin out and and to to pinch at the at that point this is a really key point i don't want to get too much into, into such depth but it's a it's a key point from a structural standpoint because this is where this is where your medulla oblongata is which is in the brain stem and it controls your uh your breath your heart rate your um a lot of the things that are going on internally. So it's in a communication and it communicates through the vagus nerve, which travels, hits your heart, your lungs, your stomach, your kidneys, making all local stops going down through the internal organs and ends up in your, your lower abdomen, which is the site of the Dantian, which is the sea of vitality. So if we're connecting up the jade pillow gate, which unleashes the, these, um, of spirit of vitality and we're locating the or we're breathing into the the dantian we're we're basically running along that vagus nerve and so this is the this is the main organizing uh nerve that for the parasympathetic nervous system so if you want to restore your energy and calm down, then the parasympathetic is the direction you want to go. And the, the vagus nerve is the leader in that, that particular thing. It's what it carries most of the information, both to and from the brain. So about 20% goes from down from the brain down to the organs, and about 80% comes from, from the organs on up to the brain. So they've got this, it's a uh, is both afferent and efferent. So the Getting your central equilibrium aligns that and so that your top and your bottom are talking to each other and you very, become very aware. And this allows you to connect up. So on a physical level, it's, it's really cool what it's doing there. And then something even more profound from a martial arts standpoint is that whenever you 
do that, you plug into energy and information that is not available to you otherwise. That is, you're plugging into the big chi. So we want to get that established. And that's something where, and that's easily testable. You start to feel incredibly rooted. You have a an effortless power that far exceeds your normal uh, disjointed, disconnected power. So your um, that, so that, so that's your uh, your first pillar. Your second pillar is energetic coherence, and that is where you're getting the whole body mind into a state of oneness or wholeness. And we have played around with the idea of just pointing and reaching with your index finger as a way of as a way of doing it. It's not the only way, but it's a really fast way of establishing energetic coherence. You just point and reach with your and feel your index fingers and immediately organizes your connective tissue system in such a way that allows you to, to get to that state of wholeness. And then the third thing is to unkink the hose. We talked about the jade pillow gate, creating unkinking the hose there unlocks the spirit of vitality, the Jing Chen. If you reach with your elbows, you unkink the hose in your shoulders and allow the energy to move more freely. And that connects up the whole system. And the, the third one is you're at the qua, at the hip joint. If you release and get sung into your hip joint, you relax the rigid tension that occurs in your butt and in your, in your back and your legs that, uh, that freezes up your, your lower abdomen and um, disconnects top and bottom. So those are your three primary kinks that get addressed in the three pillars. There are others, but those are the ones that, that are the big ones. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to explore those in several different positions. So we'll get into position, then we'll shift into a different position and find it there, and then shift to a different position. And so I'm just going to lead you lead you through it, but the with the intention that it becomes more and more familiar, so that your transitions are rapid, that you are able to instantly get into that three pillars and be able to utilize your kung fu. Uh, in a way that is vastly superior to what you're familiar with. And if you can get it so that, that you're able to respond instantly to it so that it, it looks like you're doing nothing is, is the thing. The effortless power becomes sufficient that it looks like you're doing nothing. And meanwhile, there's a lot going on. Okay, so uh, unless there are any questions or comments, I'll uh, we'll move ahead just quickly. Just let me do a quick check here and see if anybody uh, has anything. Everybody good? Sharon. Um, I know you're going to be uh, leading us through this, but I've, I've had a question for a while. Um, sometimes when you get to the point of lifting the collarbone, it's after you've lifted above it. Um, and I... I want to just rise from the bottom up in order. Is there a reason for not doing it sequentially from the bottom up? Um, I'd say you can do them all at once if you want. Uh, okay. okay. <laughs> you know, there, there's no, no real reason for me. It's, it's better if I get the two endpoints and pull pull the uh, pull the line straight, and then just find out any places along the way that are uh, that are uh, sticking, and then and then then release them. Okay. Rather than building it up like that, it's more like like grabbing the two poles and stretching them, and then let everything else fall out. But uh, uh, if you uh, yeah, if you want to want to do it the other way, that's fine too. Uh, Valerie. Um, Sharon, do you mean why don't we start with the clavicular notch and then go? You're breaking up. Could you try that again? 
Um, Sharon, do you mean starting with the clavicular notch and then the knee one? I, I mean starting from the feet and working up. Well, you know, it, it's, oh, yeah. the, way, the way I've always heard it is, yes, we do reach into the ground with the feet and then reach up with the knee wand. But for me, the reach with the knee wand is different than the lift from the clavicular notch. I get a different feeling from that. It's not the same kind of reaching up to the heavens. This is just a lift and it opens my throat and my um, air passageways. It, it, it just, it's a, it's a different physical feeling to me, but, you might have, you might obviously meant something different. So, oh, okay. thank you. Cool. Okay, so let's uh, let's do this. Okay, so let's um, feel the ball of your right foot, spiral down to the left, turn to the right, step out, and back to center. Bring that a little closer. I think we're, it feels like I'm in shadow here. We don't have any um, of those other lights. Wow, that's it. That's the secret. Okay. Good point. Probably a little closer. Okay, so feet are uh, hip width apart. And good. So you're going to feel the balls of your feet and allow your weight to settle into that. Settle out throughout the foot but you're feeling into the balls of the feet and letting the weight spread throughout, centering on the ball. Feel the toes touching the ground. Now reach with the crown of your head. And tuck in the chin. Opening the jade pillow gate. So we're unkinking the hose of the jade pillow gate. Lift from the clavicular notch. Feel the, the collarbone lifting and allowing the shoulders, the chest to open. And as you do, this is a cumulative thing. So you don't keep checking back and making sure your weight is still centered over the balls. You're still reaching with the crown, chin still tucked in, lifting with the clavicular notch. Point with your index fingers and feel into that. Feel the energetic coherence. And now we've got central equilibrium, we've got energetic coherence. So reach with the elbows a little bit, opening the shoulder joints. We're unkinking the hose. And spiral down to the left, releasing the, spiral down to the right, you're releasing the hip joints. You're sung qua, so you're sinking down into, into your legs, into your feet. Feeling the weight of your body dropping down. At the same time, you're reaching with the crown, so you're pulling in two different directions. You're lengthening the spine. And just feel into that. This is your three pillars. Feel into your hands and just notice the energetic connection there. Feel the, the tingling, pulsing sensations in your hands as you do that. Now feel the ball of your left foot 
and set your left knee and you're gonna release spiraling down to the right. So notice I'm not pushing my butt out to the side. I'm spiraling down, keeping, keeping my weight on the inside of my foot primarily. So I'm keeping my center balance on the inside of my foot rather than the outside. Even though there's some weight going throughout the foot. So just notice that, that simple action there of loading up the left leg. And we want to pay attention to the three pillars here. Again, you want to feel the ball of the foot. Set the knee. Your quad should be released. Reach from the crown. Open the jade pillow gate. Tuck in the chin. Reach with the elbows. Feel your fingers. Feel that clavicular notch. Feel that lifting, opening the chest and the shoulders. Pick up the heel of your right foot. So you're feeling about 95% of your weight is in your left leg right now. So we want to feel the central equilibrium there. So the idea is being very soon, you're releasing down into your legs. This can be a, a really good workout if you just hang here for a couple of minutes. You're learning, it's a different type of muscular involvement than say doing a squat is, where you're pushing away from the earth. Notice that we're going down at the same time we're reaching up with the crown. Yeah. Put the left foot down, feel the ball of the left foot, push your left knee out, set it over the ball and spiral down to the, you're releasing the quad, spiraling down to the left. Pick up your left heel. And we're gonna find central equilibrium, energetic coherence, and sung kwa. Open the jade pillow gate, feeling that in this simple movement. So we're going intentionally, very simply here. Simple movements so that the focus can be on establishing the jade pillow or establishing the three pillars regardless of what position you're in. So now feel the ball of your right foot, set your right knee and spiral down to the right. You're releasing down, keeping your, your three pillars as you do that. Your body is still vertical. You're feeling your central equilibrium. And just take a moment and play with that a little bit. And just kind of move around, explore different places where you can feel into your foot and just notice what that feels like. And then go back and see if you can find the sweet spot. And then step forward with the left foot. So now we have, we're back weighted, but we're one, le the left leg is forward. We wanna find our center equilibrium here. Turn back to center, feel that. Even though the left leg is forward, now, feel to the ball of your right foot. Feel the reach with the crown, reach with the elbows, fingers. Reach, feel those elbows. Now, feel your wrists. Turn your wrists slightly, just like we were talking about earlier. Just, just feel that, that slight movement there when you turn your wrists. And just feel the energy moving through. Feel the energy in your hands just by that slight movement. And now reach with your wrists very slowly. And notice as you do this, you adjust 
your three pillars as you do it. There's a conversation going on with each micro movement. Your body adjusts to that. You're reaching with your elbows, feeling your fingers, reaching with the crown, reach with the fingers now and just feel that and just feel the way that your body has adapted to this new position. Now feel the ball of the left foot. Push your left knee forward a bit without shifting your weight into it. You're just pushing the knee forward as empty as you can. Bring your hands down, reach with your elbows, your wrists. So your weight is still primarily in your back foot right now, but you're establishing a position with your, your left. So now you're feel the push your knee forward, feel that, set that. Spiral down to the left, releasing. And as you do that, reach with your elbows. Feel your central pillar. Feel that, feel that connection. Feel how strong that makes you feel. Rotate your forearms. Feel your elbows. Lift your hands, carry, and just feel into that. Just feel the adjustments you have to make throughout your body to feel the, to feel the, the three pillars maintain that. Rotate your, your, you're going to rotate your hands inward. So first, just turn them out and just feel the energy as you claim control. And ah, you return and bring your hands, rotate them. Bring your hands down. Notice that if your hands down, you're in a different position and your body has to adjust to that. You have to make the necessary adjustments from the three pillars internally in order to maintain that your central equilibrium, your energetic coherence, and to stay unkinked. Feel the ball of the right foot, Set the right knee and spiral down to the left. So you're sitting down into that right quad. And as you do that, you turn to the left, reach with the crown. So here we are again, we're, we're establishing our three pillars in this, in this position. Let's step back with the left foot. So now pivoting on the balls of your feet, just Turn your heels out so you're standing pigeon toed. And then turn your, turn your toes out so they're pointing straight ahead. So we have a, a, a slightly larger than hip width stance now, a little wider than usual. And just sink down. As you sink down, just feel the adjustment that you make as you do that. So don't let the knees go too far forward. Just go down to the point where you feel you got your sweet spot. What can I relax and let go? So you're not forcing anything. And feel your center equilibrium here. So notice that there's a tendency to want to go back in the heels. So feel the balls of your feet. 
and really allow yourself to settle over that. So your weight is, is connected there. Now pivot on your, move your heels up again and then bring your, your feet up and you're a little bit wider and sink and feel into that. So find your center equilibrium, reach with the crown, open the jade pillow gate, tuck in the chin, reach with the elbows and just feel opening up the, uh, the groin area opening up the yin channels and in the insides of your legs. And just feel into that. Relax your hips and allow yourself to sink. Get sung in your qua. Feel that dynamic connection with your, the balls of your feet. And just for purpose of contrast, rock back into your heels and notice what that feels like. Now come forward, bring your body forward so that you're feeling you're centered over the balls of your feet now. Good. Now pivot on your heels and turn your toes in your heels in, toes, heels, you're back to a hip width stance now. Find your center equilibrium here. Find your energetic coherence, Sun Kwa. Reach with your elbows and open the shoulder joints. Feel the energy throughout the whole body mind. Feel the energetic connections, feel the stability. This is where we're connecting to the big chi. This is something that you can explore throughout the day. Just take a moment, any, any place you are, you're, you're standing online somewhere, you just, just, uh, just go into one leg and just find your three pillars in that. No one has to notice. So that's uh, good. Now step in. Take a deep breath. As you exhale, disappear the chi. So if you happen to have a partner that uh, you can practice with, you know, just allow yourself to go into a totally neutral stance and then reach out and then have your partner push on your arm and see if from that neutral stance, you can go into central equilibrium. You can go into energetic coherence. You can, and, and sung kwa, unkink the hose and to see, how fast it takes you to do that. And, and the press, you're pushing in, you know, if you're doing it with a partner, you push in and just gradually increase the pressure. And then you feel if, if, if it's not there, then you'll feel that it wants to go. You, you don't have to make a big deal out of it. Just say, it's a way of checking your ability to transition your body postures and instantly, boom, here I am, central, yeah. Three pillars, okay? Three pillars, three pillars, right? Whatever I want to do, I want to find that immediately. So regardless of what position I'm in, I want to be able to instantly adopt those three pillars. Okay, grab a seat, please.
How'd that go? Great. Um, Scott. Um, I have to say that um, it, for once it wasn't, I wasn't bothering my knees, but man, the fronts of my thighs were burning. And I don't think I was, I think I had it, I think I was doing it right, but man, they were really burning. Okay. Um, well, you could probably, if, if it's really uncomfortable, then uh, you can back off a little bit, not push, not drop quite so low. But uh, uh, as, as a rule, it probably is indicating some work is getting done. So, uh, you know, I, I would encourage the burn and uh, just to be able to, to feel into that. And just because you're, you're releasing muscular tension, chronic muscular tension to be able to, uh, um, to be able to just uh, feel that sung. So, yeah. Okay. And um, so I'm assuming that, you know, I, I mean, obviously, you're saying, you know, we want to be able to do this in a, in a, you know, less than a second. Right. Means we're not really thinking about it, right? We're trying to get the feeling and repeat it, right? Is that kind of? That, well, that's it. If you're in a super conscious state, a second is a very long time. Right. But I can't, and even in a, you know, in a super conscious state, I can't say, okay, lift my, you know, lift this, drop that, reach with this, you know. Just the just the time to think those things is is more than the. Well, if you're if you're thinking about it that way, then probably you're not in that superconscious state because it's a it's a, that's more of a linear thinking. Right. You're doing step one, step two, step three. So when you're in that superconscious state, you're able to make simultaneous compu computations. Uh, that uh, you know, it's it's that knowing without thinking that uh, enables you to do that. So what the way we get there is by doing it intentionally, doing it very uh, deliberately until we don't have to anymore. So it's, it's not automatic, but it's what happens is you develop shortcuts in your body mind that enables you to make the jump from thought to execution with a minimum of delay. But, okay, to me, so, I mean, to me, it still seems like I'm, I'm, I'm reproducing the feeling of it. That's, that's yeah. the way it seems to me. That's right, that, that's how you get to that superconscious state. Right, okay, that was my question, thank you. Good. Rick. For me, it was like going to a water park, a really great water park. I always <laughs> knew when I hit the, when I changed the thing, as soon as the water came splashing down on me and went through my entire body, I said, okay, I'm here in each position. Suddenly, then the waves would come in from above, like a big, like God dousing me with cool, refreshing water. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> it's a great image. <laughs> Thank you. So anybody else? Jonathan. So we do all this reaching, and yet we're not reaching for anything like an object. So that's pretty powerful. It seems like either we're in reach mode or we're in contracting mode. I'm just wondering if when we think we're neutral, we're not. That it's almost, I realize it takes a very conscious intention. It almost seems like each one, what we're doing, we're really you know, the elbows, and even though they're not going anywhere, there's this intention sending things outward. And, and then when we're not doing that, and, you know, doing whatever else we're doing, maybe we think we're in neutral mode, but probably we're doing the opposite a lot, pulling in, being not conscious. I wonder what you think about that, whether maybe neutral is more, is not so much, what not there as much as we think it is? I think your, your, uh, your observation is uh, spot on. Um, I think that's what the point I'm trying to get at is that so much of any movement we have, we make, is happening with that pre-conscious stress response. Right. So that is our default setting. So what I'm teaching here are a lot of hacks to get past the 
the uh, the way that we are have programmed our bodies, and it's not not our fault. It's it's our DNA. That's it's nature has programmed us to do this. You know, to be these these wound up creatures mm. that are hyper vigilant and and are and are anticipating danger around every corner. We are like uh, we're like deer in the forest. Like, you know, mm. what was that noise? And uh, so getting to be able to train ourselves to actually respond to what's happening and just like, hey, there's no danger here. I can let go of the uh, of that that hyper vigilance for a moment. Mm -hmm. And if then turning it around, so it's one thing to just relax. Okay, so that's that's a passive thing. That's like okay, right. let it go and just kind of moving into a state of stillness, which is fine. But it's only half of the story. The other half is motion. And can we move effectively, fluidly, elegantly, without without that? Mm -hmm unconscious stress response. And so all these things that I'm teaching, most of these things I'm teaching are hacks to get us out of that because, you know, after, you know, over 30, 30 years of teaching this stuff, I, I'm able to see where, you know, the hurdles that people have to get to, to have to have to jump over in order to get to that place where they can, they can have that effortless power, that ease of movement, that, that calm, relaxed demeanor, that, that, yeah, but I didn't do anything kind of feel to it. And, mm -hmm. uh, and so that's it. You probably more than anybody here is, you know, have, have had a chance to explore that, uh, what that feels like to, you know, to have me grab you by the wrist and, and, then, <laughs> and then you're, you know, yeah. your, your, your body tensing up and you're, a simple motion of just reaching forward, you know, becomes a real task at that point, because you have to overcome yourself to get there. Yes, very much so. Richard, um, I was just I was just noticing that um, when we get to that reach point, which we always get to when we're trying to establish central equilibrium, um, I just realized that if what I'm thinking is that whenever my intention and when I reach when I reach, I always rotate a little bit. Um, so I know that my intention, this is going to be my intention. I realize that once I have that intention, if I rotate the other way, even a micro movement before I reach, I can feel the difference in power. I could see it when you just did that. It, 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 it was really dramatic <laughs> how much more <laughs> connected that was because, mm. you know, just, uh, uh, just like that, it's it becomes effortless power because it then you've accessed Jin. So no longer is it Lee muscular tension where I'm uh, trying to overcome my own resistance to make that happen. But I'm just gonna uh, put the I put the clutch in and then I can move forward with ease. Cool, nice, thank you, great. You want some, Rick? No, you just wait. Okay, I think it's uh, it's time. Great. Thank you all so much. Love you all. Thank you. Love you, Maria. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Maria. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone.